abundance of whatever. We are uh, predictors of the future. Ouija board operators look at open source as leveling out some of these uh, situations. There was a uh, little uh, article uh, called a bizarre uh, that uh, one of the founders of open source, a libertarian, forget his name right now, tried to take open source more libertarian and move it more to a private situation, did not succeed uh, entirely. But we do have a lot of industry-sponsored things, such as even the Linux Foundation, uh, sponsored uh, by the Intels, uh, by the Cisco's. But if you look at in the economic sphere, Cisco is having a lot of problems and will continue to have problems. Will Cisco be in uh, business uh, three or four years from now? It's doubtful in the, its current uh, reincarnation. They are laying off thousands of workers. Uh, their hardware is not doing what it used to do. And part of that is this cloud. This cloud continues uh, to, as they say, be, quote-unquote, a big cloud over uh, these uh, proprietary uh, uh, types because they have uh, the euphemism, or what do you want to call it, called cloud computing is nothing more than Linux uh, Linux servers setting there to do virtualization in all kinds of things. Let's quickly move to this, and we'll uh, we'll we'll, go, we'll do Slackware here. This is from the Linux applicant is Slackware uh, uh, for Sysme uh, Invincible. Uh, this is uh, by Diedrich uh, Swartz. I recently wrote a story. We couldn't find his stymie. The uh, with new pulse of uh, audio. As regards, it worked on it taken by Red Hat and one of its uh, workers there, uh, Pottier, Pottering, uh, uh, improving Linux with uh, the middleware demon called Sysme. Much press has been given uh, to the story surrounding Sysme, pulling uh, a Sysme, pulling into. Uh, Pulling the uh, work into question, still the work progresses and continues to move forward. Many Linux uh, distributions have chose to adopt it. Others opt to uh, take a wait and see. And this is where our Slackware comes in from uh, Patrick uh, Vothering. Uh, says Slackware is doing uh, well. That's at, uh, what is it, 14.0. And I'll read what uh, Patrick has to say concerning uh, Sysmine. I do like the idea of faster boot times, uh, obviously, but I also like controlling the startup of the system with uh, shell scripts that are readable, and I'm getting that, uh, I'm guessing, excuse me, that's what most Slackware users prefer. I agree. I uh, don't spend all day rebooting my machine, and having looked at... Uh, the Sysmin uh, configuration files, it seems to me uh, a bit far in the way of controlling of uh, the system to me. Attempting to control services, sockets, devices, and you, you'll hear, and mounts, very important there, and all within one daemon file is, is in the face of the Unix concept of doing one thing and doing it well. To a typical user, uh, if this uh, results in a faster boot time, then uh, mission accomplished. But UDEB being uh, phased out in favor of Sysmine performance, uh, these tasks, uh, we have to make the decision at some point between whether we want to uh, try to maintain UDEB ourselves or have uh, Sysmine replace UDEB's uh, function. Given uh, the foregoing and given that historically uh, Nomi was removed uh, from Slackware, it would seem that uh, Patrick is being careful not to tip his hat one way or the other. Uh, probably a very wise decision. I speculate, uh, this is Patrick, uh, development is kept private so no one uh, gets ahead, uh, gets access to his decision, decision, excuse me making until he uh, makes them. For the next revision, uh, including the software design challenges that successfully keep Sysmean out of the implementation. If uh, this is a cause, it would be uh, virtuous if other uh, community developers fell in lockstep and supported 
uh, him uh, assisting in such worthwhile efforts. Personally, I can understand that the contentions, contention uh, uh, surrounding assisting invasiveness and how it violates the Unix concept of doing one thing at a time. Specifically, having initiated processes loosely coupled to a series of run levels and, and the Cascade uh, shell scripts have uh, served Linux well for many years and maybe the concern that uh, being worked in Sysmin is too ambitious uh, in so far as bringing too many processes on the control of one daemon. Sysmin is uh, warranted and I add that uh, the logging activities taken by Sysmin are no longer human, read human uh, readable, but journalized. And I think uh, the gentleman talks about uh, the journal, uh, the uh, Sysmin journal, briefly in what we have. And it's an edited uh, situation there. Most recent genius decision uh, by Fintu to close its doors at the volume a program required to merge uh, needed sysmine changes was uh, simply too large an undertaking for it to merge a staff to handle. Will, sell, will Slackware be the next uh, distribution to fall in line with sysmine compliance? Stay tuned. Uh, doubtful until it comes uh, to uh, maturity uh, there. We wanted to talk about uh, Another application here, let me just check on our time. Well, we have time to talk a little about it. It's, it's the next, uh, they purport it to be, the next uh, Skype uh, called Twos. Uh, it's, uh, it's a client. Uh, it uses Jenkins as a means of auto... Uh, Compilation, compilation. Excuse me. Uh, every time a change is uh, pushed to the respect. Oh, that's, that's GitHub. Sorry about that. Um, and talks a little about desktops there, various desktops, uh, TUI, um, the Windows, and the Q TUI for the Mac, and U TUI uh, for Linux. So you can get these depositories. We'll play around with it a little bit. Uh, Debian, uh, Ubuntu, Min, uh, Mint, and some others. There uh, for the depositories there. And then, of course, uh, some others there. Uh, Open uh, SUSE, Fedora, etc. You can get these. Uh, the old idea is to communicate in a uh, secure manner and this is the whole idea of secure messaging there it's not fully uh, baked out yet but they are wor working on it an article came out here and you can go uh, to wire of all people out in the open hackers build a skype that's not controlled by microsoft well they're working on it as a secure alternative to skype skype is not secure no one has ever said it is but it's very popular. They have the chat portion of it, and it came out of all things uh, f uh, 4chain, uh, the place that put out the pictures of the celebrities. But nonetheless, uh, interesting situation there. Um, the uh, crypto libraries, according to this article, not in the uh, best of shape. And this, an early version of the story referred to, oh, Electronic Fund, uh, Frontier Foundation. It also updated clarify the group's uh, text chat as possible with uh, uh, TUI's, uh, but not voice chat. So you, you'll have text chat. You won't have uh, voice chat. So those are some things that will uh, have to be uh, done. But we'll look more at uh, Stymie and yeah, the uh, demon and how it affects the boot time and I know this is a little bit more of a technical kind of presentation. Some of our presentations of here will be a little bit uh, technical, hopefully not too boring. Uh, 
um, there's a little something for everybody. Uh, so uh, tombs, a to to x, um, it would be useful for people that do a lot of chatting. Uh, and if you want to do your chat, as they say, behind closed doors, at least what you think is closed doors, there's no thing 100% uh, proof uh, from the NSA. In the Linux kernel, there's excellent security there. We'll keep out, uh, quote-unquote, the bad guys and girls. But will he keep out the NSA? Well, kind of doubtful on some of that. The NSA has been working on these things uh, for many years. And they tend to be ahead of the curve, although people are catching up. This will do it for our open source report on the uh, 7th of September. We'll talk to you next week. Good day. I much prefer if, if you guys can, it would lead the, the talk into the right directions by your questions instead of just me picking a couple of things that I like to, to speak about. So, um, yeah, um, I, will, I have a couple of slides prepared here. I will uh, start with an introduction to Systemd, and then hopefully, based on your questions, we can touch uh, particular areas in, uh, in more detail. So, um, let's jump right in. This um, slide um, contains the original description of uh, Systemd from the Systemd website. Um, it's a long, long paragraph. This is the first half sentence of it. Um, it's, it's a paragraph with a lot of information on very, very little room. Um, it's not necessarily easy to understand, and that's why we're hopefully going to parse it a little bit and, uh, so that everybody understands what is meant by this. So, the first half sentence reads, Systemd is a system and SAS manager for Linux. So what does that mean? A system manager, probably everybody might have an idea. The system is like this operating system thing. Um, and a system manager, that, uh, what we mean by that is, is, is that it's an init system, that it manages the system, that it manages the components of the system, meaning that it controls a little bit um, uh, um, what processes are being run based on a couple of things. A session manager, on the other hand, is the, um, the term session manager is probably known to, to many people, like GNOME session is a session manager, and KDE session is a session manager. And systemd also manages this, um, the session. So uh, um, basically, it's a replacement in some ways, or, or it can be, be used to augment GNOME session or KDE session um, for Linux. Let's go on. It's compatible with uh, System 5 and LSB unit scripts. Um, LS, uh, system 5 and LSB unit scripts probably everybody has known. At least if you ever came in contact, in closer contact with the Linux system, you probably have played around with um, System 5 unit scripts. They are basically these things, etc, initd, some service start and stop you can start. Uh, we're compatible with that. We're in a system that, that um, tries to stay compatible with existing um, System 5 or LSB init scripts. LSB and System 5 is basically the same thing in this context. Um, basically, System 5 um, introduced the original contact, uh, um, ideas, and then LSB standardized around this a little bit and, and, and extended um, the original System 5 specifications, like standardizing exit codes of those init scripts and, and standardizing the verbs that you can pass to it and standardizing a comment and a couple of other things. But it's mostly synonymous. Um, Systemd provides aggressive parallelization capabilities. Um, parallelization, probably many have uh, uh, quite an idea what that is. And what that means in a system, in an in in init system context, is probably um, not so difficult to understand either. Basically, it just means we start everything that we start in parallel. Um, but um, the word aggressive here, it means that it's probably a little bit beyond what uh, existing um, inner systems do. And uh, in a later slide, we'll go a little bit into detail on what precisely this kind of uh, aggressive parallelization means. It uses socket and dbus activation for starting services. That's probably one, of, uh, one part here of this paragraph that is only understandable after you um, had a look on the, on the further slides we have. Um, basically, it means that, that we can uh, start services if something happens on a, on, a, on, a, on a network socket or if something happens um, because somebody required a DBus service or something like that. So um, I, I, how, why this is so, so very useful and is so interesting that we put it on this initial paragraph, we'll see a little bit later. Um, but yeah. It offers on-demand starting of daemons. I figure most people will also get a kind of an idea what that could mean. It could mean, for example, um, that we start a daemon the moment we use it. For example, if, if we have a daemon like Bluetooth, which um, is responsible for maintaining the Bluetooth hardware, that we then start the, the, the daemon only 
if the Bluetooth hardware is actually plugged in. But this is.